Pumpkins and beer have been going on together for a lot longer than I originally thought. Pumpkins are native to the Americas, and pumpkin seeds have been found throughout South America, Mexico, and the eastern United States as early as 5500 BC. So the indigenous people have had a few thousand years to get pretty familiar with them. When the first European settlers arrived in the Americas, they hadn't seen pumpkins before. It didn't take them long to see how useful they were though. Seeds were eaten, used as medicine, dried pumpkins were ground into flour, flattened and woven into mats, and gourds were used as bowls for containers for grain. Of course, they brought them back to Europe in the mid-1500s and they were widely cultivated in England where they called them pompions, or pumpkins, and France where they called them pompon, pompon. Fast forward 100 years or so, and we have the first recipe for a pumpkin pie in a cookbook. Now, when it comes to pumpkins and beer, they use the pumpkin for a lot more than just uh, flavor. Lisa Grimm, co-host of the Beer Ladies podcast, wrote an article on SeriousEats.com and states that while good malt was not so readily accessible, fermentable sugars had to be found where they could. And in the first pumpkin beer, the meat of the pumpkin took place of the malt entirely. Hmm. Colonists had limited access to wheat and barley and those were generally used for bread flour with oats and other cereal grains used in cooking and for livestock feed, things like that. But pumpkins they had in abundance. Pumpkins were not used for their flavor, they were simply a source of starch, converted into fermentable sugars, just as with malted barley. Apples, pears, squash, corn, and other local agricultural products were also used as a source of fermentable sugars, but pumpkin stood out in terms of its availability and its ability to produce, with some age, a fairly clean finished beer. Now, when higher quality malts became more available throughout the 17th, 18th centuries, people just didn't need pumpkins to make beer anymore. For a little while, they were used in the mid 1800s for flavor, but that was short lived and pumpkin beers kind of just faded away for well over a century. And some things that should not have been forgotten were lost. In 1978, President Jimmy Carter signed Bill H.R. 1337 and finally legalized home brewing at a federal level in America after nearly 60 years since the start of Prohibition in 1920. Jimmy Carter is often referred to as the homebrew hero because of this. But this is essentially the beginning of the craft beer movement in the United States. Now, it was still up to each state to determine whether or not they wanted to legalize it. Obviously, not every state was going to be on board with that, and I think... Alabama and Mississippi were the last two to legalize home brewing as late as 2013. Fast forward a year to 1979, people are brewing their beer at home legally. I mean, I think there was a lot of home brewing going on prior to that, but, but people are making beer that tastes a lot more different with more flavor than what you could buy on the shelves because at that time, the market was completely dominated by popular loggers from large beer corporations like Budweiser, Coors, and Miller. 1981, as craft breweries start to open their doors across the country, a man named Bill Owens writes this book called How to Build a Small Brewery. That's important, we'll get to that later. 1982, California legalizes brew pubs in the state, allowing a brewery to sell their beer along with food on site to the public. 1983, Buffalo Bill's Brewing opens their doors in Hayward, California, located just outside of the San Francisco Bay Area, or part of the Bay Area. In 1985, Bill Owens came across a pumpkin ale recipe from George Washington, and he was completely inspired by it. He ordered the pumpkin seeds, he started growing his own pumpkins, and started brewing this ale that is, you know, maybe more along the lines of pumpkin pie with cinnamon, cloves, and nutmeg, but a lot of beer drinkers absolutely loved it. It went on to become the first commercially produced and distributed pumpkin ale in America and completely revived the, the pumpkin beer throughout the craft beer industry. Fast forward to today and there are thousands of different pumpkin ales brewed around the world. A lot of breweries prepare these beers to be released in the fall as one of their seasonals, obviously. Elysian Brewing out of Seattle just held their 18th annual Great Pumpkin Beer Festival where they serve a ton, like over 80 different kinds of pumpkin beers. Then they, they take this massive, like 100 pound pumpkin, fill it all up with beer, then tap it, and everyone can, you know, pour their own beer, and which sounds amazing. I didn't know any of this but until I started researching uh, all these pumpkin beers, and it sounds like a lot of fun, but I do want to go back to Buffalo Bills Brewing in the early 1980s. Now this, like I said, was the beginning of the craft beer movement in the United States, and he writes this book in 1981, How to Build a Small Brewery. 
Now, as per their website, it was revised and expanded in 1989 and then again in 1992 in collaboration with Jeff Harries, the man who would end up buying the brewery a few years later. By that time, in 1992, over 30,000 copies were sold. I guess researching all this information makes it really interesting to me because I don't know how popular Bill Owens was or how regarded in the industry he was back then, but I do wonder if this pumpkin beer that exploded in the mid 1980s got him more attention or like, you know, kind of put him on the map a little bit. I mean, this is all speculation, but if that beer made him super popular, people discovered that he wrote a book and then they read that book and then they got inspired to take their homebrew to the next level and start a brewery, you know. Bill could have been the inspiration for a lot of people out there who went on to start their own brewery and become a part of the thousands of breweries across the United States and Canada. And I just think that that's really cool. I did read that along with the pumpkin ale, Buffalo Bills is also credited with creating the Amber Ale and the Double IPA. Owens himself is credited for creating one of the first American IPAs. So maybe it wasn't just the pumpkin ale, but still, pretty cool. Not gonna lie, Bill, Bill sounds like a pretty awesome guy. He did uh, an around the world hitchhiking trip. He's a renowned photographer, brewer, author, served in the Peace Corps in Jamaica. In 2003, he founded the American Distilling Institute and was one of the leading spokesmen of the craft distilling movement. Bill Owens went on to sell Buffalo Bills Brewing in 1994 to Jeff Harry's, and in 2018, Buffalo Bills was inducted into the Smithsonian American History Museum as one of the most historic brew pubs in America. Unfortunately, about five months ago in June of 2022, the brewery had to close its doors. Rising business costs, probably the end of the pandemic became a little too much and I think that that was that. So it always sucks to learn and read up about something or a person or a brewery that gets you really excited and then you find out that, yeah, they just closed. But if you're having a pumpkin beer that you really enjoy, we can raise our glasses to Bill Owens, Jeff Harry's and Buffalo Bill's Brewing and say thanks. What can we expect from pumpkin beers nowadays? Let's uh, finish pouring this guy out. We got our beer here. We got a pumpkin beer from Alicat Brewing in Edmonton, Alberta. Pretty nice beer, I'm not gonna lie. It is 5.4%, 20 IBU. And uh, we're just gonna talk about what you can expect with a pumpkin beer nowadays. I mean, obviously with craft brewers doing what they do, you could easily stumble upon a 15% peanut butter pumpkin pie porter uh, if brewers wanted to submit their pumpkin beers to, say, the Canadian Brewing Awards or the Great American Beer Festival, it would have to follow the style guidelines in the BJCP Beer Judge Certification Program. And the pumpkin beers would fall under Section 30B, Autumn Seasonal Beer, a beer that suggests cool weather and the autumn harvest season. So the appearance is going to be medium amber to copper brown. The aroma is going to be malty, spiced, balanced. Clearly you're hit with some spices right away. Very malty, but it's just, it's a balanced beer. Right on the nose, you get that pump. No, you don't even get pumpkin. It, you get pumpkin pie, which is really the, the cinnamon, the nutmeg, the clove. The mouthfeel is medium to full with low to moderately low carbonation. Now, I'm really at the end of the day, everyone's just trying to go after pumpkin pie in a glass. And Alicat did a really good job of it. It's, it's tasty. It's um, delicious. I mean, they even say experience, boom, right here. Pumpkin pie goodness in, as a beer. So that's what you can expect in a lot of pumpkin beers. But I mean, we'll just take a quick look at a couple of the other ones that I got and just, I'm not gonna try them all, but Ghost Rider Pumpkin Brown Ale. This is a 5% brewed with pumpkin and spices, beer with pumpkin flavor. Classic brown ale brewed with pumpkin, cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves, and allspice. The Great Pumpkin Ale, 5%. They're like, we're not gonna really say anything about it. Pumpkin Eater, Imperial Pumpkin Ale from House Sound Brewing. An Imperial Amber Ale brewed with pumpkin, nutmeg, cinnamon, ginger, and clove. So, I mean, you understand what most breweries are trying to go after here. They're not trying to reinvent the wheel. You know, I'll be honest. I was not a huge fan of pumpkin ales. I would try one or two a year, but it really wasn't anything I was ever excited about. And it kind of just marks the end of summer. And now we got to get ready for like five or six months of shitty weather. But I will say, after researching the history of pumpkin beers, Bill Owens, Buffalo Bill's Brewing, I like them a lot more now. Knowing the history always helps me in liking something I find. Like if I 
If I like the history, I'll be quicker to point out the things that I do like rather than what I don't like. How about you? Do you like pumpkin beers? Do you have a favorite? Let me know in the comment section down below. I am going to share a few of the articles that I got a lot of the history from, and if you would like to read up more about it, it's gonna be linked down below. Other than that, I think that is a wrap on pumpkin beers. I hope everyone is having a great fall up here in the Northern Hemisphere. Stay warm, stay cozy. Like this video and uh, give a subscribe to Beyond the Brew for more content, and we will see you guys in the next video. Cheers.